How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, I'm going to give you a tour of my library. We're going to be looking at Omnis, Absolute Editions, Epics, Trade Paperbacks, Standard Size Hardcovers, Deluxe Editions, from all the type of publishers. So stay tuned. Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected oh, Editions. That cover's so okay. awesome. Absolute Format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Okay, this year we're going to kick it off with the Marvel trade paperbacks uh, and also some Marvel Masterworks. So there are some hardcovers here. So up here is my collection of Amazing Spider-Man. These are standard size hardcovers, whether it's Marvel Premiere, whether it's the Marvel Masterworks, or whether it's Epic Collections or trade paperbacks. Um, and we slide in some spectacular Spider-Man and other little mini-series or ongoing series that didn't last that long. We don't really have a web of Spider-Man series yet. Hopefully we will one day. Uh, and then I'll have it all in alphabetical order. So over here is uh, my Avengers. And you may be wondering, why am I keeping this one up here? Uh, usually I keep these because I already have them in omnibus format, but I keep them just in case I need to do a comparison between this and the internal artwork in like a Marvel Masterwork or the omnibus format because they use different scans in the Omnis. Um, but yeah, we go from the Avengers all the way to the Brian Michael Bendis era. And then of course we've got the Avengers Initiative and Avengers Academy, and then Captain America. Some great underrated runs. I don't know why, sometimes I put these in chronological order. Like even though this is a retcon, it takes place in the past. So I have it there. And then of course the Marvel epics kick off in the silver age. So we have volume one here. So I put these in chronological order and also alphabetical order. And then we have some other books that have not been collected in epic format but are coming out sometime. That's the end of the Mark Grunewald run. Now if you're wondering why doesn't he have all the Captain America epics and that's because I have some books in omnibus format and then some in epic format. I mix and match. I have some books up here. That's the Captain Marvel stuff because I'm keeping it to do a comparison with the second Omnibus. These Conan Chronicles I've kept because this is the stuff that was not in the Omnibus editions. This is from the Dark Horse comics era, but it was published by Marvel when they had the rights. So this stuff has not been collected in the Colossal Conans, the Sumerian or the uh, King Conan, the King Colossal Conan book that was published by Dark Horse Comics. Is there any news on getting a second King Conan Chronicles? I, I really hope so. Uh, Anonymous would be really nice, and that's Titan right now, so hopefully one day. Uh, here we have some Daredevil. Daredevil has a lot of love in Epic Collection. Like, there's so much of Daredevil in Epic Collection. We have so many unbroken years of Daredevil. Uh, this is more of the most recent series, and I have to shift things around all the time. Uh, here's the Defenders runs with some... I like to call the Marvel, Ma this is going to sound blasphemous to some people, but I like to call the Marvel Masterworks my placeholders when that epic comes out. I also have it here for Doctor Strange. And I really hope we get this particular era uh, sometime collected in omnibus format. Fantastic Four, which I was really happy to announce, Volume 5 coming out. Hopefully we'll get like a Fantastic Four Heroes Return omnibus one day. Um, because I think out of Let's see, Iron Man and Captain America and the Avengers. Fantastic Four It's the only one that hasn't had a Heroes Return on the Biz. Even Thor got one. Some Ghost Rider, finally getting some love. Uh, we're getting some epic collections of this stuff. And actually, my Ghost Rider epic is down there. That's, that's what happens when you don't have enough time to putting these books in order because you're busy reading and filming. The Incredible Hulk also getting some love in epic format and these placeholders. This is mainly the Bill Mantlo era, which is phenomenal if you've never read it. Hopefully one day we'll get that in omnibus format, but the epics are great too. And the Greg Pak stuff that was never finished in oversized hardcover format. Iron Fist, the only omnibus of Iron Fist, or the only epic collection of the classic Iron Fist, also available in omnibus format soon. As a matter of fact, I got an early copy of it. Maybe we can look at it in a bit. The Iron Man stuff, and I still have to keep trades like this. 
because not all of this is collected in the Battle Royale or the Enemy Within. This, by the way, brings back memories. This is my first epic collection. This was a lot of people's first epic collection because it was the first epic collection released well over 10 years ago. Crazy how just time flies, I swear. But that was 10 years ago that they started the epic line. And look where we are. We've got Kill Raven epics. How did that happen? Well, one, but still. And then moving into the modern era of Iron Man, like the Matt Fraction, uh, yeah, Matt Fraction, Warren Ellis stuff, and some more Iron Man with the Bendis era. Uh, this is Fear Itself, because again, it's in alphabetical order, but it's Fear Itself the Fearless. Fear Itself was collected, hey, Kill Raven, I was just talking about that book. Fear Itself was collected in the Thor Omnibus by Matt Fraction, so I didn't need to keep the standard size hardcover. Moon Knight also got lots of love in Epics. And Namor, we need that too. Hopefully we'll get that one day. Where's that New Warriors? We need that New Warriors in Epic format. This is the Nova collection. Um, this is the Sam Alexander Nova. It's one of my most wanted Omnis. I really like that character. A series no one talks about. The Order is Barry Kitson and Matt Fraction. Short-lived series, but it was a really fun series. Power Man and Iron Fist. Maybe one day we'll get an omnibus of that. Punisher really needs to make a comeback in epic format. And in an omnibus format. I, there's so many good stories that they've yet to collect. And I love to see Punisher War Journal collect full, like the whole run. Not just the Jim Lee era. Let's see, we got Savage Avengers here. Uh, this has been released in omnibus format. Not sure why I have these here. Oh, yeah, why, why do I have these? That's weird. Yeah, because this is the stuff that's been released in an omnibus format. But there was a follow-up series to Savage Avengers that lasted just six issues. Um, that has not been collected. That wasn't part of the omnibus. I think I let my brother borrow it, so he's got it right now. It's just Savage Avengers. And then... Scarlet Witch, oh, this is an excellent series if you haven't been reading it. Uh, Shang-Chi, this is the recent Shang-Chi stuff. She-Hulk, getting her own epic line, and then a couple of complete collections. Not complete collections, since they stopped calling them that. I think they're just called sagas now. And then the new She-Hulk by Rainbow Rowell, which has been quite fun. Silk, surprised that hasn't been announced as an omnibus yet. Silver Surfer, look how skinny this one is compared to the others. This is volume one. We desperately need that volume two, which is the Stan Lee and J Big John Buscema. But here's volume three. And then we've got Silver Surfer Rebirth there. And then Spider Girl, which is coming back in a modern epic collection. Another Spider-Man. Or this is Spider-Woman by Dennis Hopeless. And this is another one that's complete. And then the classic Spider-Woman here. In Marvel Masterworks, the more recent runs, which um, I think this is getting collected in a big complete collection too. It's a big trade. Spirits of Vengeance. Oh, yes. Love that era. Some Thanos stuff. Thor. Oh my gosh. So much Thor in Epic Collection. It's just beautiful to look at. And my placeholders until we get those Thors in He's Epic. He's the closest to being complete. Yeah, him and I think, was it Captain America? I think so. Now, of course, this Captain America is starting in the Silver Age, not the Golden Age. Um, Thunderbolts, which I'm not sure why I'm keeping these since I've got most of this stuff in omnibus format. And then we have Tomb of Dracula stuff, The Ultimate, very underrated series by Al Ewing, Ultraman, some Venom stuff there, and then Winter Guard. Like, yeah, so I keep these in alphabetical order. And then down here is my Star Wars stuff. In a weird publishing order, you have the original Marvel years over there. Uh, you've got the, some of the Dark Horse era over here. And then you've got the most recent Marvel era over here in trade. And that's until usually a omnibus comes out. Then I can give those away during our giveaways. And then we have some more Marvel Masterworks down here. Like Kazar and Ghost Rider. Werewolf by Night and Dazzler, Tomb of Dracula. I think I gave away one and two already. And there's Ghost Rider, the epic collections. 
Now, you're probably asking, where's all the X-Men stuff? It's on an alphabetical order. Uh, that's because X-Men get their own bookshelf. So this is the trade of X-Men. so. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate that. Um, so Cable, for example, not have... They don't have epics of Cable yet, uh, but maybe one day. Some titles like District X, some of the most recent Cable series, uh, Domino, Excalibur, Exiles. Not sure why I'm keeping this since it's already an omnibus format. Uh, and then Exiles, one day I hope to see this all collected in omnibus. Gambit, some trades that are out of print now, Gen X, Mutant X. <sighs> My buddy Brooks sent that to me. Uh, this is a hard to find trade paperback. Um, he sent that to me because I had, uh, oh my goodness, four years ago, I think, maybe five years ago, uh, had just lost my dog, had to put her down. And he was like, hey man, I'm sending you something just because. I thought that was really awesome. That's when I really started to connect with a lot of my viewers about five years ago. Uh, New Mutants, and you're probably like, what the hell? Why is X-Force right after New Mutants? Because if you know, you know that New Mutants evolved into X-Force. And then I have the next New Mutant series. And then later that became New X-Men. And then we get <laughs> Uncanny X-Force. Not, not the Uncanny X-Force that you're probably thinking of by Rick Remender. But this is the Uncanny X-Force by Humphreys. Sam Humphreys. And then there were two teams. There was, was X-Force right here by Cy Spurrier, and then Uncanny X-Force. There's X-Factor, and then all the Peter David stuff. Wolverine, heck yes. Cannot find my Wolverine by Greg Rucka collection though. No idea where that ended up. But I can find my Wolverine by Daniel Way collection, which is down here. Uh, Extreme X-Men, which has been made into an omnibus, and we are gonna get a second one. I think that's been delayed until August. Astonishing X-Men, this is the stuff after the Joss Whedon era, and Marvel at one point couldn't make up its mind whether they wanted to do deluxe or standard size hardcover, so I just, I don't care. As long as it's collected, I mix and match. Yeah. So if you've seen my reading orders of X-Men, this is, yeah, this is the shelf that I keep them on. The trades and the standard size hardcovers. Um, and then down here we have some uncanny stuff, like some Marvel Masterworks, some uncanny X-Men. And then some trades that are not available in omnibus format yet. Got to announce that the other day. Awesome. Very happy for the people that have been asking. But I mean, look at all the stuff that needs to be made, right? We've got this classic Joe Mad stuff that's not been collected in omnibus format. How do we not have this in omnibus format? I mean, they could just call it the Joe Mad era or Joe, uh, Marvel Comics by Joe Mad. There's, he's got a huge fan following. You have the Onslaught Aftermath, which leads into the... This was such a weird time of X-Men, because like, they were really cashing in on the idea that X-Men Gold and Blue, this series over here, uh, were so big that they decided to make these two trades. And I love it. Like, There's, there's this wonderful history of collected editions uh, at Marvel Comics that they thought ahead. They were like, hey, why don't we just make these zero, like volume zero, and X-Men Blue Volume Zero, but it has nothing to do with the Mark Guggenheim series or the Cullen Bunn series that you see over here. This is actually the era that comes after Onslaught, right before the hunt for Professor X. So again, if you've seen my reading orders, this is where I pull them from. And a lot of this stuff hasn't been collected in oversized format. Does it deserve to be? Oh, hell no. I don't think anyone's asking for a Chuck Austin omnibus. But would I buy it? Oh, hell yes. Day one, I would buy that omnibus. It's X-Men, baby. It's the curse of X. I'm an idiot for that stuff. I realize it's awful. Uh, this is the return of Chris Claremont over here to the X-Men. It was called the Reloaded Era. These right here. And I love the fact that they even have like the stuff. Like, I'm serious. Like So much respect for the Collected Editions department. Mainly because this is the way that I would have collected them. Like, it's just thinking ahead. They were like, okay, Chris Claremont left the book. What are we gonna do with the leftover stuff that's written by Chuck Austin after Claremont left? Well, how about we just call that trade paperback X-Men Reloaded and not put Chuck Austin's name on there? So I thought that was really cool that they did that. They 
finished out collecting that particular era in trade paperback that way. Uh, you have this, the color era, as I like to call it. This is the most manga era that you're going to see in Marvel Comics. Iceman, Jean Grey, uh, even Rogan ba Gambit that led into Mr. and Mrs. X. There was also the Gen Generation M, I think is what it's called. No, no, they ended up calling it Generation X. Uh, and then down here is the Krakoa era of X-Men. My goodness. One day that stuff will be in an omnibus format. And then you don't have to keep up with the trades. I was really sad to see these discontinued. And these are really special because a viewer sent me these. These are the John Byrne unpublished stories. These are his fanfics. But, I mean, it's all written and drawn by John Byrne. Of course, it's just in black and white pencils. But, I mean, John Byrne drawing X-Men again? Oh, yes. I think he discontinued that, too. Like, he's done with that project for now. Who knows? He might come back one day. And we'll come back to Marvel Omnis here in a little bit. Looking at some of the stuff up here, like some hardcovers. This is Empowered, an Adam Warren series published by Dark Horse. And then Gold Digger. Like stuff that I remember collecting. Fred Perry's Gold Digger, if you're not familiar with that era of Antarctic Press. They were a big manga or anime inspired company that was publishing books here in America by American public or artists and writers and had that anime flair that was blowing up in the late 80s, early 90s here. Uh, and then some image stuff here. Some image titles, hardcovers like the Invincible Library. Um, up here you have East of West. And, and people always ask me, like, are these books going to come back into print? And I always tell them, you know, like, <laughs> Jonathan Hickman said that East of West is done. Like, he's not bringing that back to print. But, I mean, it's like the Rolling Stones, right? This is the last tour we're doing. Until the next tour. But then you have Die, which is complete, yet it says book one on the spine. Well, maybe because Gillen has other ideas. By the way, can I just give a shout out to my cameraman that's been talking to? I haven't introduced him. That is Christian, everybody. He volunteered to film uh, today. He's been helping with the channel a little bit, so that's him saying hello. So thank you so much, man. Uh, um, so if you have any questions, you just feel free to ask. But yeah, uh, most of these are done in alphabetical order. Sometimes I pull books out and put them somewhere. Um, I'm hoping one day we'll get a collection of do a power bomb like this beautiful edition of Murder Falcon. Um, I'm just I'm a big fan of Daniel Warren Johnson. I feel like his his books should be in oversized format. Monstrous is one of these beautiful books that uh, has that manga feel to it of course helps that sana takeda drawing it and sana's just an amazing artist i will say it is very very dialogue heavy i wasn't expecting it to be so like so deep and so such a big heavy read but it's a good book mice templar broke my heart because they discontinued these oversized hardcovers you know, people, oh, um, I see people complain about Marvel and DC discontinuing lines. Image is no stranger to that either. Like, we don't have a Peter uh, Panzer Faust Volume 2. They discontinued Mice Templar, Manhattan Projects. It's on hiatus until until Hickman comes back. Uh, Lazarus is also on hiatus. Hopefully that will come back. Lady Mechanica is now being published by Image. Um, but they do bring a lot of these books back to print. And some of them stay in print. So these are known as evergreens. Like, I believe Paper Girls is one of those evergreen books. Usually if it's Brian K. Vaughn, it's usually evergreen, meaning that it will always stay in print. Or find a, find a way to stay in print. Savage Dragon Volume 2 has been delayed. And where is the Cobra Master Collection Volume 2? I think we only need three. Uh, down here is Rat Queens. Another series, I think it's been four has been announced. There's Peter Panzerfaust looking all lonely. Saga. What was the other one? Morning Glories, which is over on the horror shelf. Oh, look at, these are beautiful, though. This is the Wicked and Divide. Wicked and Divide is such a great underrated series. Velvet, probably one of my favorite brew bakers. I had such a mad crush on the lead character. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, Grindel. Oh, yeah, Volume 4 is over there. I need to go get that. Like, what's that doing there? This is what happens when I get my, um, my wife and kids to help me put books up. I think they're just like, I'm just going to sneak this in here. Sure, it fits. Uh, down there is Elephant I'll Man. Never know. 
yeah, I'll f I find this stuff. <laughs> uh, Elephant Man down here. Now, that's the original stuff that's published by Image. I think Dark Horse, they have the rights to publish the new stuff. And then other publishers like Bone, the complete full. Uh, this is the full color volume one. This is the Frank Frazetta Death Dealer. Uh, this was the Kickstarter book of life and death or a Kickstarter. This was sent to me by Billy uh, Tucci right here when I had him on the show. Oh my gosh, that's been years ago. I told him that he needed to make the omnibus of the big deluxe edition and he listened and he wanted to thank me by sending me a book. Uh, this is the voiced, the definitive edition, which are like the size of the absolute editions. So instead of reprinting these, they decided to go the omnibus route. And now up here, which we got some six gun and Kaiju Max Wasted Space, which is one of my favorite releases this year. So every year I do like my favorite releases, whether it's my favorite read. Now, I do, my favorite reads are one video. And then my favorite releases are the type of books that I thought were really awesome that came out. Um, There's so many good books that came out this year. Like this stuff right here by Richard Corbin, that probably will make the list because this is just absolutely stunning what they were able to bring out. Um, some stuff by Cullen Bunn, Aftershock Studios, Many Devs of Layla Starter. It came out at the beginning of the year. That's a custom. How did that get there? Uh, I need to pick up the other Mind Management, not Mind Management book, I'm sorry, the, the Spy book by uh, Matt Kent. This was a freaking awesome read, though. Uh, Enigma, Jeff Lemire's, oh, such a good series. This, by the way, if you've not read it, was a Vertigo series by Peter Milligan and Duncan Fregedo. And Dark Horse now owns the rights to printing. I don't know, I can't remember if this is out of print or not, but this is the deluxe edition, or the definitive edition, but it is a standard size hardcover. The Witchblades and the Darkness right here. There's another, maybe this is the one that he sent me. Why do I have two? I need to give one away. I gave one away during this, um, this giveaway of 90K. I'll give the other one away at 100K. This beautiful set of Black Hammer, such a great series from Jeff Lemire, Neil Gaiman's library. Hopefully, no, they are. They're doing the, what's it called? The Norse mythology in that library edition format. The classic Predator stuff, even though it's been released in uh, Omnibus Edition, I like these big oversized books. Madman coming out with a Volume 5 in December, maybe by the time you watch this video. Considering we have Alien Epic Collections, are we going to get Predator Epics at some point? Wow. You didn't. You just had to ask that, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. I'd say so. I don't see why they wouldn't. As long as they have the rights, too. Something's Killing the Children, Volume 2 is coming out. One of the most underrated IDW books, if you could still find it, this is an amazing, beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, Kurt Music uh, is the writer on this, and then David Wenzel is the artist. And it's got some gorgeous artwork in here. It's one of my favorite IDW titles. I, th I can't remember who published I think it was Image that published it first. But if you can find it, it's out of print, but I'm pretty sure you can find it pretty cheap. Klaus, I just got in the complete collection of that. Irredeemable, I'm saddened to see that instead of doing the this in the hardcover format, like an oversized, they decided to do these in hardcover format, these compendium standard size books. Ones in Future, getting a volume two. Kali's a great read if you haven't read it. God Hates Astronauts. And this is what I do when I let somebody borrow my books. Uh, the Amazing Amanda Borrowed the Invisible Kingdom. So I keep the dust jackets. So oh, I know what books are missing. And I immediately I'm like, oh, that's who has it. Of course, the downside to that is in case this book falls over, it's going to squish your dust jacket. So I always try to pull it out some. But because we were filming, I was pushing it in. Uh, some books over here. This is Discordia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, these are like Kickstarter books that my buddy Kyle sent me. Uh, we have Wasteland down here. And then Lumberjanes, I need to finish out that series. My daughter really liked Lumberjanes. And some other trades that either I'm giving away or I'm letting friends have. The original compendiums that kind of fell apart. These are my second copies of each. I remember getting this because of a big sale on Amazon. And I'll be honest, I read like the first two issues and I was like, eh, yeah. It's okay. It definitely has a fan following. This, that's from Xenoscope. 
And then down here we have some more different type of books, I guess. Not everything is um, from Image. There's stuff in here from Dynamite. Uh, this right here is from Dark Horse, a beautiful book. Some of these are Kickstarters. And then these are the Umbrella Academies and the True Lives of the Fabul Fabulous Killjoys from Dark Horse Comics. All right, let's look at some of these DC trade paperbacks and standard size hardcovers. So you've probably seen my Batman reading order, and it's all there. I, I do put deluxe editions in here as well, like this Adam Strange book. I don't know, some deluxe editions make it here, some of them make it in my deluxe edition shelf. Why do I do that? That's so weird. All right, this stuff right here I try to keep in chronological uh, alphabetical and reading order and every time i do these i love doing this i've been doing these walkthrough videos this is my sixth year maybe seventh i do something on purpose that a few people catch sometimes i put volumes um out of out of place so like a volume five will go before a volume three and four and people will catch it you guys are good you're like hey the hell's wrong with you man why that volume's making me like you get <laughs> you get all like uh worked up about it it's awesome i like that uh so leaving batman and moving on to the rest of the dc universe like birds of prey and batgirl booster gold represent one day we'll get that movie catwoman some of this stuff has of course been collected in omnibus edition but i like to keep Trades, it makes reading orders a little bit easier if I want to show people like, oh, or you can go this route. I hate making pictures pop up in case I only have the omnibus. This is the same reason I kept my Mark Wade flashes, Savage Velocity, which we only got one book and they canceled the second one. Who knows? We do have an omnibus coming. Gotham Academy, The Flash. And then we have Green Arrow down here. Like I said, this stuff in omnibus, but keeping it because reading orders do need to do a green arrow reading order one day and heroes in crisis uh this was really sweet this was uh dark star 916 sent me these custom books they're pretty much the trade paperbacks of jla put together in five omnis tower babel which is one of the best but honestly the most underrated my favorite justice league story comes from Dwayne mcduffie and that is the unjustice league and the Injustice League, sorry, not Unjustice League, um, comes in a standard size trade paperback or hardcover. It's set during that time of Justice League right after Brad Meltzer left. And Lex Luthor makes his own Injustice League. Uh, there's a big wedding shower bachelor party for Green Arrow and Black Canary. Uh, Joe Benitez drawing some of the stuff in here as well as Ed Bennis. And Ed Bennis had been writing the book. Oh my goodness, look at that, Ed <laughs> It's cake. <laughs> they knew their target audience. But Ed Bennis was the artist on the book that started uh, with Brad Meltzer. Look at that, Legion of Doom, come on. How could you not love this book? Very underrated. Like his run on J uh, Justice League was great. Like, And then of course editors got involved and were like, wait, why don't we bring back Nah, never mind. It's not even worth talking about. Let's keep going. Uh, Justice League of America. That's when the book ended up uh, wrapping up before the next relaunch. And this is, of course, by the James, great James Robinson. So we've got Justice Society of America, stuff that's not in the two or the three Omnis. Uh, Legion of Superheroes. It's a hard, hard series to try to collect because... This is like the before the darkness era, and then we have the actual darkness saga that's available in a uh, big deluxe edition, and then we go back to trade paperbacks. I'm really surprised they did the five years after in two Omnis. I'm very happy. This is one of my most wanted Omnis. Mark Andreco's masterpiece of Manhunter. Oh my gosh. It was so good. And sadly, they canceled the sixth trade paperback with the backup stories from Detective Comics. That broke my heart. Uh, we have New Gods, Book 1 and 2, Mystery in Space, another series uh, that nobody really talks about. This is by Jim Starlin. It's freaking awesome. Shane Davis does the artwork in there. My favorite Nightwing run. I cannot wait for the compendium. Sure, it's not an omnibus, but hey, it's a compendium. It's a big collection. Hopefully, they'll do the whole thing, including 
the Devin Grayson era, which is not that good. Uh, but hey, complete us, right? Power Shazam. Sad that they made this one into a trade paperback instead of a hardcover. This is my daughter moving Superman here for some reason. Let's get him out of the way for right now. Um, and some play art Superman, by the way. Then we have Robin here. And again, in alphabetical and in chronological order, the different Suicide Squads. With the release of Young Justice Omnibus and Aquaman being announced, I'm hoping that Supergirl gets tackled next. That Peter David run on Supergirl is stellar. Then we have Superman. These are like the ins and outs, you know, different origin stories. And then we have Superman, of course, in chronological order over here. If you've seen my reading orders, it took me six parts, and there's a reason for that. It, it, Superman is such a big character that it took that much to talk about him. And then again, I am pretty long-winded when it comes to talking about comics. But I, some of you keep coming back, so thank you for that. Just going to skip over Wonder Woman? Oh, well, no, no, not really. Sorry. My bad. Thanks for calling me out there, Christian. Uh, so. These are great, by the way. Tales from the uh, Dark Multiverse. Now we can skip over Wonder Woman. No, I have Wonder <laughs> Woman in Omnibus Editions. All right. DC, if you're watching, can I please get my Greg Rucka Wonder Woman, the greatest run on Wonder Woman collected, please? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I do love this, though. I got to give them props for this unified look to their spines. Well, you know, not... The William Messer and Loeb stuff, but who knows, one day that might be re-released. But this, oh, I love. Now, we do have the Greg Rucka stuff collected in Deluxe Edition from the Rebirth era. And, yeah, Wonder Woman by Straczynski, and then, of course, he ended up leaving the book. And then the New 52 era over here. Some of it, of course, I have in omnibus format, and then most of it collected in trade paperback. Yeah, alphabetical order again, from Aquaman to Batman. I think that's the Detective comic stuff. And then uh, Justice League, Red Hood, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Superman, Teen Titans, and then more Wonder Woman. And over here, I think, are just ins and outs again. Yeah, some stuff from Vertigo, some stuff from Wildstorm, uh, some stuff from, what was that line? Young Animal. Uh, over here, we have some compendiums, not all the compendiums, because I think I'm going to keep... Like Green Lantern, right? And Robin and Nightwing. Those will go with their series. But this is like Milestone and some of the American comics. And then Vertigo. And then some Rebirth stuff down here that I need to move around. I think I'm, uh, next time I do this video, next year, the tour, might look a little bit different. All right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, where's my volume two of that compendium? There's a second compendium. Uh, and then, of course, the IDW era. Now, for the people that have been asking me where are the reprints of Volume 14, I think, they're coming. It's just that when they go out of print, those they try to keep evergreen. Uh, the Disney stuff by Fanagraphics and IDW. I love this book so much. Let me show you one of my favorite signatures I ever got was from Don Rosa himself. One of my top 10 favorite stories of all time. Not just duck stories, but life and times of Scrooge McDuck. And what he did was scratch out Walt Disney. And of course gave me this speech about how Walt Disney had nothing to do with his story of Scrooge McDuck. Uh, so if you ever met Don Rosa, he is a hell of a character. Just like Uncle Scrooge. These are out of print too. The Darkwing Duck stuff. This one was really... Actually, one of my viewers sent me this when I lost my dog. Man, you guys are so nice. Because uh, I had the the big Dangerous Edition that they rewrote the dialogue in. Uh, and then Joe Book started printing. Now IDW is doing it. But, yeah, this is the original stuff here. The DuckTales and Darkwing Duck crossover. All right, let's talk about some robots in the skies. And that is, of course, Transformers. IDW printed these. These are the Marvel comics. Uh, but you, listen, if you're collecting Transformers, and I'm sorry, I know you're waiting on my reading order, part three, and I promise that's coming. I'm just swamped on with reading so much stuff. Um, this is really cool because in this particular printing, so you want the second printing of these books, they were able to use 
licensed characters like Spider-Man reprinted in a IDW comic. So very cool. That's why I tell people to get the Transformers classics, but the second printing. Some of these are completely out of print. I realize that. Is there an easy way to tell that it's second printing? The covers. The original covers. Uh, these have the single character on the covers. The original covers don't. Um, and then this is the classic stuff from the UK, which unfortunately got canceled. Now, no word yet on Marvel or Skybound or any publisher releasing this stuff again. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll, we'll hear. Then this is the manga stuff. And then the Duck Comics down here, which is phenomenal. I love this. I'm actually missing one. I need to go and get it. Um, you know, for people that are worried about spine changes, it, like, it happens, right? Like, what, that's one of the things that I've just learned to let go is spine changes. I think it was a big thing with, with Marvel when they changed the spines. But as a manga collector, which, by the way, we'll do the manga tour another day, I, I just get used to it. Like, Fantagraphics have done it, too. They've changed the spines on the books. And as you can see here, you know, we went from this to these type of spines. But, eh, I'd rather have this stuff on my shelf than not have it at all. IDW, G.I. Joe era, and then the classic Marvel stuff. Unfortunately, the G.I. Joe era was discontinued. I love the designs of the books because they were very much like the Transformers designs with the character and their weapon. But sadly, those were discontinued. And then we have the classic G.I. Joe era here of the Marvel years. Some Dreamwave stuff, some Transformers ins and outs. Uh, this my buddy Jeff got me. And then uh, down here we have some more IDW stuff like Ragnarok. Fallen Angel. Ah, what a great series. Started at DC Comics and went over to IDW. Peter David. Pretty much continuing the story of Supergirl. Maybe. Matrix, if you read it. Uh, but the final story, The Return of the Sun, was not collected in any of these. So make sure you pick up that trade. Creed. I found a hidden gem. So every... Every month I do hidden gems on my channel, books. This is a wonderful story right here. Of course, based on the books. And this is all by P. Craig Russell. Somebody suggested in one of my videos, one of my walkthrough videos, that I should have a monthly video where I just walk through the shelf and I start talking about a random book. Which actually sounds kind of fun. Hawkman. Oh, this is the uh, stuff from overseas. And the Ghostbusters, right now Dark Horse has the rights, but I don't know if they'll reprint these stories. Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day, um, from IDW, and then the Mega Man and Sonic book. And then down there are some of my hidden gems that I haven't talked about yet. But speaking of hidden gems, that's what we're going to talk about next, where I get most of my hidden gems. So we're going to be looking at these two shelves. Um, this shelf right here, it's a very small shelf, but uh, these are some of my favorite stories that uh, don't get a lot of love. But the top one up there, it's not one of my favorite stories. And I'm one of those people that I've tried to read Love and Rockets. I'm going to try again. I'm going to make it a 2024 goal to read it again because somebody was kind enough to send me the box set. It's all busted up, but I don't care. That was really kind. It's just a series that I couldn't get into, and I kept them because my wife bought me that set. She was awesome. She bought, like, did the research because they don't have volume numbers on them and bought me that set, and she thought I would enjoy it. I felt so packed because I got to the second volume, and I'm like, I don't know if this is for me, but I'm going to give it another shot. Uh, people told me to get to the third book, that the mapping is better in the big deluxe hardcovers. So we'll see. Uh, over here are some other of my favorite stories, like Queen and Country. It's an awesome Greg Rucka story. Um, Mouse Guard, Stuff a Legend, two books that desperately need to come back. Desperately. The Wind in the Willows, this is done by David Peterson of Mouse Guard fame. I don't know why he doesn't go back to Mouse Guard. Now, this is, of course, not a comic, but I have to keep it down here. It's just gorgeous artwork by him. And I don't, I don't know if he's going to go back to... Mouse Guard, I really hope he does. I really enjoyed that series. 
That one's published by IDW. Uh, and then down here, some other books you probably have seen on my channel, whether top 10 books that make me cry, top 10 books of all time, standalone comics, uh, hidden gems. Yeah, you may have seen a lot of these. This is a beautiful book right here, Above the Clouds. This was a Kickstarter. Yeah, great, great book. Lost Path. There's all these little stories. Like, that's why I love bringing attention to these lesser known graphic novels that people haven't heard of. That's why I do Hidden Gems every month. I pick five books off my shelf. That's honestly how it started. One day I didn't have an episode idea and I just went to my shelf and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna talk about five books nobody talks about or I don't see enough people talk about. These, oh my gosh, these I think I bring up every year. I gotta be careful because there's a bunch of booty in here. A lot of nudity, male and female, but let me see if I can find a couple. Nah, them dudes are naked. Maybe this one, nope. Come on, <laughs> Jack. Give me something here so I can show the people. All right, so this is Jack Cat's masterpiece. It took him decades to finish this. Um, the earlier stuff is amazing, like the amount of detail that he put into each panel. Let me make sure this one's okay. A lot of, a lot of people walking around naked. A lot of people walking around naked in these. And you all know how YouTube is. They get silly about that. I think this is okay. Um, this is volume three. You know, he has the, definitely that Joe Kubert kind of quality to his artwork. But let me show you something from the first volume. I, I think I every year I pull one of these out, and I'm like, one of these days I'm going to talk about the whole thing. These were published by Titan. Let me um, let me find a couple pages here. And this was, I believe it was all self-published. But if you look at these panels, just look at the amount of line work and inking. This is amazing. And there's a reason why it took them a couple of decades to finish these stories. And, it, and, and they are very dense stories. Like, they're not, like, adventurous stories. They're very sci-fi. It almost reads like a prose. And lots of naked people in it, but we're okay to show this. Right here. But I, just, I don't know. I fell in love with the series. Um, it was something I think I read in a forum that people were sharing. And I'm like, oh, that looks like it's up my alley. Beast of Burden, Dragon. Yeah. Lots of books you've seen on my top 10 reads or best standalone comics, best standalone graphic novels. And this is usually the shelves that I pulled in from. I've done a whole Hidden Gems on Flight. I love that series. And if you've not checked it out, you need to. It's wonderful. Some of these books my wife gave me because she was like, oh, that looks like something Omar would enjoy. And I, and I end up do enjoying it. Some of these my viewers have sent my way for Hidden Gems. They're like, oh, you need to talk about this. And then more hidden gems over here. So behind this is like the Dennis the Menace collection up there. I just really like this Blab magazine. It's got such a weird cover. Battle Pug, heck yeah. Bang, Ballad of the Tiger. Our buddy Josh Greathouse, my wife, edited this book. It's just so good. It was fun. This made it into my hidden gems. Guy's a great artist and writer. Um, and also, happens to watch my show. It's a good guy. And then, of course, all of the hidden gems from different publishers, whether it's Image, Vault Comics, Boom, IDW, uh, stuff that's self-published or kickstarted or crowdfunded. Um, you know, so a lot of, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you probably recognize a lot of these books. A lot of these books have made it into my hidden gems. Uh, just because, I, like I said, I, I, I love sharing great stories with people. Now, of course, I say that and then, you know, people watch my stuff and they're like, oh, I didn't really dig that. Awesome. It's not, you know, not everybody has to dig the same thing we all do. There's a lot of stories I don't really dig that everybody else does. And vice versa. Uh, this right here is a great graphic. No, I just started reading it last week. Uh, this is Hardcore Anxiety. It's a graphic novel to not just punk rock, but mental health. It's done by fellow Kentuckian Reed Chancellor. Makes me happy to have people from Kentucky represent not just Robert Kirkman. Although it helps to have Robert Kirkman represent Kentucky, though. That guy's made a pretty big, big name for himself. He don't even live here anymore. He lives in Florida. Or no, he's in California now. But lots more stuff to talk about, too, on my hidden gems. Uh, horror hidden gems sometimes they come from here but yeah lots of uh lots of books my goodness 
I've done a lot of reading. Oh my gosh, that's the biggest questions I get. Like, oh, look at this, outrage. Uh, Baby Niciesa and Riley Brown. They worked on Cable and Deadpool together. And this is their self-published book. It was a webtoon book at first. Now it's a little hardcover. Um, the biggest question I get is when people see my library tours, they're like, how much of this have you read? And every year I do try to keep up. Like, uh, I think this year... 67% of my library because it's just so much there's so much to keep up with uh, let's move down here so much to keep up with uh, because you have constant books coming out then you have like big books coming out and I'm just like oh man I can't keep up with the old stuff because there's new stuff coming out so but I try like I, I'll show you my reading piles here in a little bit and how I go about uh, separating the reading piles and see down here all these in alphabetical order space mullet is coming back even though it's not finished it's coming uh, it's getting a reprint that collection rather so i'm happy about that but lots of good stories and lots more to to read all right let's take this party to the big eeps the big books okay we're gonna start with dc some Umbrella Academy. So yes, I also collect some toys. Uh, we have some Absolute Editions here. These are not all my Absolute Editions because I'm sure if you've seen my videos when I'm talking to the camera, I do have Absolutes and Omnis behind me. And those tend to be my favorite ones. And I can't make these all my favorite. What is this not doing there? This should be one of my favorites. It's wonderful. Oh my gosh. Really hope Marvel and DC will one day reprint that. I'm glad this is getting reprinted though. The, if you're not familiar with this, this is a magazine size absolute, so it's a little bit different in dimensions of this. Um, here, let me just show you, compared to like another absolute edition, just, it's a little bit longer because it's magazine size. And I'm assuming the reprint will also be magazine size, uh, but this is the work of Paul Dini teaming up with the phenomenal Alex Ross for these beautiful short stories. So it's like an anthology that features the different characters of the DC Universe. Uh, it's got one of the best Captain Marvel stories in here. It's Captain Marvel, not Shazam. Even though you can call him, you can call him whatever you want to. Uh, it's got Green Lantern, Batman, Wonder Woman, Hawkman, and you get the idea, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman. But it will come back to print, I think in 20, if I'm not mistaken, in 20, 20 I'm just going to leave that in here. Every time I try to do that on video, it's going to mess up. Uh, 2024 is when it's coming back to print. So then we have some more absolutes over here. Some of them are facing out like this because I have the room. Now these over here, uh, never forget Trumbo sending me these because these were some of the ones that I missed out on because I, like a dozen of us, we were waiting on the Immateria collection, which was supposed to be the omnibus editions or one omnibus edition of this, by the way, still showing up in the DC catalog. And it was going to be landscape size for the first time in an omnibus format. So I missed out on getting these. This is Promethea, Absolute Promethea by Alan Moore. And one of my favorite artists of all time, J.H. Williams III. Uh, but yeah, he sent me these. I sent him this, the, the deluxe. He said, one of my, I'll never forget that experience. Um, yeah, more Absolutes. Two, I think, is coming back to print. No word on three yet. This is the new printing of V for Vendetta. I just gave away my other one for the 90K subscriber giveaway. Absolute Wildcats. I own this because of the art. I love Jim Lee's artwork. Watchmen's being reprinted, probably by the time you see this video. And then Doomsday Clock, side by side. Even though it's not in alphabetical order, I don't care. Just they belong together. And then we have the Vertigo era or I guess now the Black Label era of DC Comics. Even though some of these will always be canon to me, and some of them are, um, but here we go. Sometimes they were known as Vertigo. Now I think everything that was Vertigo is DC Black Label, and sometimes they put the DC Black Label logo, sometimes they just put the DC logo. Not really sure how they decide to do that, uh, but we do have some stuff that was originally published like by Wildstorm, and then some stuff originally published by Vertigo. So that's where I keep it. Down at the very bottom of the shelf, though, oh, we can't forget about He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, of course, is the 
Spawn Collection. So those are the big deluxe editions, the black and white ones with the glowing eyes. Aren't they making more? Yes. I think he said that they're going to go all the way to 300, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So up here, a couple of Golden Age books that I, I'm either going to give away uh, for one of our giveaways or, I don't know, maybe keep for a reading order in the future. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but my DC Omnis in alphabetical order. And again, 67% of this collection is quite a lot considering reading things like Jack Kirby's Fourth World. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is I have that, right? I have the Omnibus. And over there, you're going to see the Absolute Edition. And you're going to be wondering why. Why do I have both editions if, I, if it's all one story? I think it really depends if I really enjoy the artwork, if I wanted an oversized format. Like I have something you probably notice is planetary. I have absolute planetary, and down here I have the omnibus. But I really like Jean Cassidy's art. Uh, same thing with Wonder Woman by Brian Azarell and Cliff Chang. Love that artwork. But also have the omnibus, which you'll see down there. Uh, so, yeah, alphabetical order. Here we are, a Green Lantern, finally getting that Green Lantern core in omnibus format. Last year, we didn't even know about it. It's crazy how time just flies. How do we only have one Hawkman? We need some more, like the Vendetti era, or I'll even take Hawkworld. You know, I just remembered, I need to get House of Secrets Volume 2. See, this is why I do walkthroughs, because I also forget. I know this is not an omnibus, but it was solicited as, as an omnibus, and it became a deluxe, but here we are. Justice League of America, mine I've always said belong or began with International. But I am thinking about getting that Detroit era. And of course I'm thinking about it when it's out of print. Making room for that Justice League International Omnibus Volume 3, baby. JLA. No, no future JLA volumes yet. That Justice League Dark won't be alone much longer. There'll be an Omnibus. I don't know why I kept this. This is all included in Volume 2 of Justice League New 52. What the heck? Why did I keep that? JSA, my favorite Jeff Johns. This is the book I was talking about, Legion of Superheroes. I'm surprised they actually collected all of it in Two Omnis. That's nuts. Speaking of Two Omnis, I cannot wait for that question, Volume 2. And before we go anywhere down here, let's come back up here for a second. Because we need to talk about this. Um, so Flash is a very interesting collection that DC is putting out. So we have... We will have four volume ones with no volume twos when we get to the uh, Joshua Williamson era of Flash collected in omnibus format. Like the only one that's been finished has been Jeff Johns. Three volumes and Flashpoint, even though there's a lot of double dipping here. Mark Waite doesn't have a volume two as of this video. Of course, it could be solicited as soon as I say this and you're watching this and you're going to be like, what an idiot. But uh, we have that and we have like the Mike Barron stuff. That's been solicited, leading into the William Messner Loeb's era with no volume two of that, uh, which would be the William Messner Loeb's era leading into the John Byrne era. And then we have the Francis Manipool omnibus right here from New 52 with no volume two. And Mark Wade's no volume two. So that's four Flash Omnis that we have from different eras with a volume one and no volume two yet. I really hope that they do give us I mean, I'm sure we'll get a Mark Wade. There's no way this didn't sell. It's it's the stellar run. It's the most historic run on Flash. But knock on wood anyway. All right, where were we? Where were we? Seven Soldiers of Dis uh Seven Soldiers of Victory, not Destiny. Uh, coming back to or just came back to print. And then the Spectre, which of course had this one here. Oh, look at that. My that's what happens, man, when I let my brothers do this. Should have left it alone, though. This is the classic stuff. That's a custom, but I still kept it there. I have this because it actually collects one issue that this doesn't, the death and return of Superman. Do you set your collection up with expansions in mind for other volumes? Yes, uh, sort of, sometimes. And then sometimes Marvel and DC surprise me. Uh, the Superman stuff... Well, we saw some. We saw Exile and Death of. But this is all the Superman Omnis, outside of, of course, the Golden Age stuff. And then New Teen Titans. See, Christian? I'm holding out hope for that Volume 6 to come back. And Volume <laughs> 7. And then My Teen Titans from Jeff Johns' run. I made my own customs of those. 
and Wonder Woman, which we've had some of these come back to print, like these two in Volume 1 of Perez's run. Zero hours getting a reprint. And um, these up here were the customs that, my goodness, Kirk uh, Kiefer made those years ago. My gosh. Been doing this quite a while. Some of the stuff hasn't been collected, and some of it is coming out in omnibus format. Like, legit. Um, but yeah, this is the DC area. There is more Omnis of DC and Absolutes. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these books so far, check out our first sponsor. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answered within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Okay, now moving on from the DC books to these particular books over here. And some of them are facing the right way. Some of them are the slipcase side. Uh, but this is just some of the bigger books that I have from different publishers, whether it's Oni Press or Magnetic Press, Coffin Books, and of course Humanoids with their beautiful books, and Terry Moore's line, and then, oh my gosh, dude, I fell in love with this, like, because of my channel and people reaching out to me years ago, asking me if I had ever read Judge Dredd, I was like, no, so I did, and I've made a few videos, and I'm still... Where am I now? I think I've done to 24, and the next batch will be 25 to 30, 36, I think is the way that I do it. I'm trying to do them by 12s. I've had a blast reading these. Still looking for that Judge Anderson Volume 2 that my buddy Super Laugh Hard sent me. I cannot find it. I'm sure I'll find it one day when I'm not even supposed to be looking for it. But lots of stuff. This is all Super Laugh Hard sent my way. Uh, Bat sent me some stuff. Man, there's just some wonderful viewers of mine. And I'm, I know I can't name them all because I, well, I can't remember. So many people that are just so kind. What is that doing there? See, like that's in the wrong place. This should have been somewhere else. All right. Uh, so people have asked me if I have CGC books, and the only CGC books are just gifts that were sent to me from my viewers. That's it. I don't really do CGC. These were just uh, sent to me by some of you wonderful folks, and I keep them over here, mainly because that's where my wife put them. If you did, though. Which issue would you want? Mm, 168, Uncanny 168, my very first comic book. And probably 114, because I've always loved that cover. And I've got, that's the only comic I've got signed by Stan Lee, Chris Claremont, and John Byrne. Um, so maybe, that, that would be it. And some Elvira, some more 2000 AD Titan comics over here. Uh, Black Sad is a master, please. Please, I'm kidding. I'm going to talk pretty one day. No, you said it right. Master, please. Is that what I said? <laughs> uh, I meant Masterpiece. It's wonderful. I hope the, the new book comes out soon. Giant Days, I'm so glad they decided to do a Kickstarter. See, to me, like that's the purpose of Kickstarters, is to do books like these, these lesser-known books, um, even though, boom, at least they owned up, though. They made a mistake on the printing of these, so it doesn't feel the same as the original books. So there was a refund, or you can wait till next year. I can't remember what I decided to do. But look at that. But my wife wanted to steal that bumper sticker from me. And I was like, no, it's part of my set. Uh, there's some Dreadstar here. Yeah, my order, honestly, of books sometimes doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to me. And I guess that's all that matters. Black Mask book from Rebellion. Um, and then over here... These are really cool collections. Yes, my buddy Super Laugh Hard made me some custom books down here. So awesome. I've had those for years. And, I've, and honestly, that's how I've read some of the Judge Dredd when, he, when I was going through the case files. I would go back over here because these are in better reading order. Uh, this is the stuff that 2000 AD published that hey, all these volumes make one giant picture. He sent a bunch my way, and they are phenomenal. I love the way they look. Um... Uh, Let's see, what do we got here? This is one of my favorite releases from last year. The Alex Ross Full Circle, Fantastic Four, published by Abrams Books. I got to talk to those folks at New York Comic Con this year and learn a little bit more about that license, how they're able to publish original graphic novels. 
uh, the Adventures of Red Sonja Omnibus, Invincible Compendium, even though I have the oversized hardcovers. Uh, the fine folks at the Living the Line sent me both the, the, these copies. One of these was the... It, it was the unfinished copy, so they sent me the corrected version. And last I saw, this book will make it in my top 10 reads of this year. This was amazing. Amazing. Loved it. Uh, some stuff from Fanagraphics over here. And then down here from TKO and Oni Press. Some stuff from Ahoy Comics. Lost Girls. I need to move that up. Oh, it's one of the best reads I had last year. That's such a good book. Keeping two. And let's come up this way. Let's look in here. Because this is where I have, well, you can see the other side now of these books, which is the Terry Moore Library. And I have the new one that just came out, the, what was it, the Parker Girls? Hasn't been put up there yet, so I need to make room. Then the other side of the slipcases and the Humanoids books. And then Pogo, you know, I only bought one Pogo. Wasn't my cup of tea. But I get why so many people liked it. Uh, Suicide Girls, that's not even a comic. What's that doing up there? <laughs> These are beautiful, man. Titan Comics. These are freaking amazing. Uh, oversized books of Elric. Now, this is the new incarnation of Elric. So it's a retelling of his story. Oh, they're beautiful books. The third one is coming out in at the end of November, I believe. And then the humanoid stuff. I love this publisher. They bring out so many books from Europe. Uh, like the Incal is probably the most famous one that they've brought over here. And many different versions of it. And Meta Barons. Uh, they've done the whole complete Johto library. This was one of my favorite reads this year by Corin Shadme, the Lugosi, Lugosi book. Not Lugosi. And yeah. They've done slip cases, they've done coffee table books, this is some magnetic press stuff. They put out some beautiful books too. And lots of, lots of uh, European books, but also books here from America. They're starting to make their own more and more. And they're about to celebrate 10 years of publishing, which is crazy. I mean, we have all these publishers, right? Like Clover Press and NBM and Living the Line, and Humanoids, First, Second, uh, Cinebooks that people aren't really that familiar with. So that's another reason why I love talking about these collected editions, uh, bringing it to people's attention. Because you know, I, I love superhero books too, but I know that a lot of my viewers also enjoy non-superhero books, and there's quite a number of them. Snowpiercer, you know, the movie's based on that. Torpedo. Not Torpedo. It's a Spanish book, but we never got the translation in America of that IDW collection. And some Lone Sloan stuff down there. Wrinkles and Mystery. <laughs> the Manara Library. People always want me to show that. And I'm like, I can't. Like, YouTube will immediately demonetize me. Um, especially the Erotica Library. So I did find that. I think I was missing from my last walk through because they were in a box somewhere and I could not find my box. Uh, some stuff from Humanoids down there, some Doctor Who stuff from Titan, Tardy, this is the, uh, the it was the War of Trenches I think, yeah, and Goddamn This War, wonderful books. Claw, which Claw, I think they did make a box set of that, or maybe that's the Kickstarter, and the Shaolin Samurai, and then over here, what? are some deluxe, oh, there's the Love box set from Magnetic Press. Um, these are deluxe editions, uh, but there's a different variety. There's uh, Marvel on this side, but then some other stuff too, like these stuff from Abrams books. Uh, you have the Ultimate line, which of course has been collected in omnibus format, but not all of it. Uh, it's some Marvel Masterworks. These are the remasterworks mixed in with classic stuff or newer books in here. Um, I think I have these books because I'm considering them, or cons uh, considering putting these in my favorite releases of this year. This I'm doing a side by side comparison. So sometimes I keep books in certain places because I want to talk about them. 
Uh, over here is the deluxe edition collection of the Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis, that era. And then the newer era of Avengers by Jason Aaron. And Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky. Sad to hear that that was discontinued. Uh, Deadpool over here and Doctor Strange. Fantastic Four. I just got volume four in. Comes out at the end of this month. Or no, beginning of next month. Guardians of the Galaxy. I kept these because I had Guardians of the Galaxy uh, by Bendis 1. And then they finally announced volume two, which will contain both of these in there. So both of those will be collected in that volume two. And then Iron Man, where there's the Mad Fraction stuff, and that was discontinued. Hopefully we'll get an omnibus of that to the Bendis era. Miss Marvel, the books that I needed that weren't in the omnibus. These I kept because I do reading orders of Spider-Man, and I'm pretty sure in 2024 I'm going to do an update at one. Uh, but these are mapped different than the Omnis. These actually collect some of the spectacular Spider-Man stories um, that were not in the JMS Omnibus. And then Superior Spider-Man, which is now an Omnibus, and Amazing Spider-Man. These are still in chronological order. And down there is... Some of the books that my buddy Kyle sent my way. Gravel. And then The Art of Liam Sharp. Thor by uh, Jason Aaron. I've got the Omnis. And those, um, one of my viewers, many years ago, many years ago, uh, Philip sent me like, oh my gosh, he must have sent me like 10 Omnis and so many hardcovers for a giveaway. And all he said was, you know, these are for you to keep or you can give them away. Because he knows I have giveaways whenever we reach a milestone. And here's some of the Venom stuff. And then Young Avengers. And I will never forget, I asked him, I was like, okay, is there a book that you're looking for? And he was like, well, if you can ever find a Jason Aaron Thor oversized hardcover, volumes one and two, I'd appreciate that. So I don't know if he's watching this or not, but he's going to get that whole set because I have the Omnis. I don't need to keep that. Now on this side is where I have my DC Deluxe Editions. And Batman's just hanging up there with Iron Man. And my mother-in-law makes these awesome Legos things. I love those things. Just don't have a... I know it's weird to say I don't have the room to put them, display them properly. Uh, here's the box set to Fables. Uh, the Compendium box set, which I've done overviews of these. You know, most of the books that you've seen... On the tour, I've done overviews of, or mentioned them in videos, haul videos, or you may have seen them here. Uh, deluxe edition of Rebirth. I really wish they had not discontinued this line. It was probably one of my favorite lines, and I thought DC finally got, you know, a, a, a line that they could stand out for. You know, they have the absolute editions, and I feel like oh, this is kind of their answer to... You know, Marvel at the time was cranking out Omni, so I was like, oh, well, maybe they can keep doing that. Unfortunately, they did not. We still get some deluxe editions from time to time. Uh, this is the black label stuff, so it's a little bit longer. It's like a magazine size. Kind of like that uh, Paul Dini and Alex Ross book. And then we have more deluxe editions over here. Kept my 100 bullets uh, because, yeah, Brother Lono was not collected in the Omnibus Volume 2. DMZ has not been reprinted in Omnis. Maybe a compendium. Actually, I think, no, it does have a compendium. I'm not sure what Fables is doing laying down like that. I told um, my wife that we need to keep these tight. She had been rereading these. She loves this book. Volume 16 is going to be really interesting. It was solicited, but it's already delayed. And the single issues are delayed. Here's the Jack of Fables, by the way. And it's because Bill Willingham has pulled it and just... <sighs> Have you heard about what Bill Willingham did with Fables? I have not. So he has made it where it's kind of free to everybody. Where DC's no longer the only one that can make money. for. I don't know how much, um, you know, of that... Can, can actually do something to DC not being able to publish those books. But it is weird when he made that statement. There have been delays with the single issues that will make up volume 16, which will be the last one, which I was really excited for because it was, he was coming back. He was doing that and Big B and Batman. And then we have some more Vertigo books. 
deluxe editions down here and pride of baghdad is there anything that you do not have ha <laughs> what a great question um believe it or not there are a lot of books i'm missing um a lot of manga i'm missing if you want to follow me over here i'll show you uh, it's some of the stuff that i i do this is how my brain works um and like Essex County, I'm missing the hardcover of that. Uh, a lot of the creepy and eerie hardcovers I'm missing. So there are things that I look for. And I, I don't think I purposely look for them when I'm... Like online, I could make it easier and pay an arm and a leg, even though I stopped that nonsense a long time ago. Um, there are books that I am missing that I go out in the wild and try to find. It makes, the, you know, it makes collecting exciting. And have been doing that for many decades. So I don't care what you collect. I think you always have to look for something. It makes that, it makes, you know, it drives the passion sometimes. Uh, so what this is over here are videos to be released. Like books from IDW, books from Dark Horse, books from Marvel, whether they're reprints or new books that I'm in the pro, uh, these are not in the process of reading. These are books I just got in the mail. Uh, over the last couple of weeks or months, and I'm going to make videos of them. Uh, some of them, they told me to wait for recent reprints, like Dark Souls. They told me, uh, Udon asked me to wait to do that. So I do, I do love working with different publishers. And yeah, these are the books that you might be seeing overviews of on the channel sometime soon, uh, including some of that stack on the floor <laughs> that you're seeing down there. I was once told that you're not a hoarder unless there's books on the floor. Damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's what that is. And the way that my brain works is, okay, I got to read this stuff here first and then move. And this is, of course, the way that I stage things. Uh, move to this stuff right here from IDW. Then I got to go down there on the left-hand side. There's some stuff from uh, Humanoids that I need to read for a, for a book uh, or for a video for a book. But, yeah, that's just the way that I work. A lot of stuff. This is why it's hard for me sometimes to catch up with when people ask me, Hey, Omar, have you read this series yet? So, single issues. You know, very excited to read um, was it The Immortal Thor. So excited about that. But I don't have time to go and read single issues anymore. Because I'm reading these big bad boys. So, now we've reached the Marvel area of the Omnis. But before I do that, we got to give some props to these big, beautiful books over here. The Complete Peanuts. Now, I don't have the Sundays. Why don't I have the Sundays, Christian? You just asked me, are there books I don't have? There you go, I don't have the Sundays. Why? Like, I can't answer that. I don't know why. Well, you always have to be looking for something. I'm going to be looking for those now. The And Infinite Graphics just had their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. So. The Stephen King Omnis, the original Marvel ones. Uh, I think the new printing or the new printer, the publisher made these into standard size, no slip case and the stand. And then my wife's annotated Sandman, which is freaking awesome. Marvel I have in alphabetical order. I've landed out 1963. Plus I didn't make room for it, so I've got to shift things around. Next time you'll see 1963, probably 1964. Uh, here we have the Annihilation Saga. Maybe I didn't want to add it. Maybe I'll move it because <laughs> I didn't want to break up the five volume saga. Absolute Carnage, which is also, of course, collect some of it is collected in the uh, Donny Cates omnibus. And then Acts of Vengeance, Adam Warlock. Yeah, so there's a lot of new Omnis you're going to be seeing this year. Marvel released so many Omnis and reprints in 2023. So this is all the Spider-Man stuff. And again, in chronological order. And a lot of reprints are coming out. This was wonderfully mapped. Probably one of my favorite releases in 2023. So yeah, at the end of the year, I always do my favorite reads of the year. Top 10, top 10 releases that don't include Omnis. And then I do top 10 DC Omnis released in 2023. Top 10 Marvel Omnis released in 2023. And it's a lot of fun. And those type of videos were suggested by you all. So thank you all so much for all the wonderful advice and suggestions over the years your favorite hardcover underneath the jacket why would you ask that like right now uh the thing i really like the design of the thing i think that's one of the coolest designs um but there's 
been quite a number of them that I enjoy. I, li I like when, like, they take panels, like you'll see in Wolverine, where they've taken panels from the comic book and put it on the art on board. I think that's great. Like, it's amazing that they've reprinted Captain Britain and expanded it. That's nuts. Like, ne I remember some of my viewers, like, voting the first year whenever I do the Most Wanted Marvel Omnibus reprint poll every year around March. I think February or March. People were like, I'm wasting my vote on Captain Britain. And I always said, well, you never know. And sure enough, we got Captain Britain reprinted. Not just reprinted. But expanded, which is just nuts. It's great. Living in the golden age era of these big Omni editions. So if, if you're new to the hobby, my gosh, you've got all this access to things that, you know, five even five years ago, people had no idea were ever going to come back to print or ever get made. I mean, we've had things like Deadpool and Cable reprinted. That's crazy. Yeah, but all this stuff is in alphabetical order. And in chronological order. Anywhere from big thick omnis to skinny omnis. Most skinniest one right here. Collecting nine issues, I think, of Devil Dinosaur. Yeah, nine issues. So anytime somebody uh, I see somebody going, that's got to be the smallest omni. Whenever I make an announcement of something that's got 17 issues. Uh, no, not quite. Devil Dinosaur. Earth X, very underrated series. And The Eternals was another one that got reprinted, expanded. I love when they do that, whenever they expand the Omnis. And of course, you can't talk about Marvel Comics without talking about Marvel's First Family, making room for that Volume 5 coming out. Can't wait for that. Fantastic Four by Byrne got reprinted this year. You all voted for it. Uh, Wade Ringo? No, not reprinted. No, next year, next year. And then Hickman, a small, small glimpse at, to the manga tour whenever we do that video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Smash that like button. My wife always reminds me to do that and not forget. Guardians of the Galaxy, we have a volume two of the Brian Michael Bendis era. Hopefully we'll have some more. We'll have like Guardians of the Galaxy 3000 uh, to go right after the Jim Valentino era right here. And I keep Infinity Wars right next to Guardians of the Galaxy by Duggan because that is a follow-up to it. And then, of course, everything else in alphabetical order. I don't have Volume 1 of Incredible Hulk because I just bought it as part of my haul. So I need to put that up there. And then, of course, this. I, I, that's crazy. When I first started making announcements for Marvel Comics, the, one of the books that I announced was The Incredible Hulk by Peter David. And I will never forget, like, people uh, messaging me or on, on, I would see people sharing with me on forums. Like, this guy's crazy. Who does he think he is? He doesn't work for Marvel. He has no idea what's coming out. And honestly, I would feel the same way. I'm just some guy on YouTube in my basement making videos. I wasn't even wearing the suit back then. How the hell would I know what Marvel is releasing or reprinting? And here we are. What's, uh, what's one Omni that you're particularly proud of since you started the channel? Oh, that's over there. I'll show you. Remind <laughs> me. Uh, but there's a couple of, of them here. One of them is right here. New Warriors 2, baby. And we're getting a third one? What? That's nuts. Um, that was a... Peter David, I asked... That was our first conversation. Because this was about to come out. And I asked David uh, Gabriel... Why don't we have a Peter David Omnibus collection if we're getting a Jeff Loeb? And a couple days later, he emailed me saying, Hey, we're going to do a Peter David Hulk Omnibus. You want to announce it? Yes. Yes, I do. It's crazy just how time flies and how, it, you know, like where I was before and where I am now. It's nuts. And all these books have come out. A different variety of books. Like Miracle Man? Yeah, at one time we were freaking out that Shang-Chi was coming back to Marvel. And unfortunately, they, I don't think they're reprinting those. But now we have things like Miracle Man and Star Wars and freaking um, Aliens and Predator. It's just nuts. Moon Knight's been getting a lot of love. Getting a volume two of that. So not just classic Moon Knight, but also 90s Moon Knight. Hopefully we'll get more modern stuff. 
Yeah, new warriors. Love it. Power Pack got two Omnis. Punisher, I'd love for them to do more classic stuff. Like, we have one volume of Back to the War, the classic stuff. I'd love us follow-up to that. Runaways. Runaways is one of the few books I actually got a custom dust jacket off because I didn't like that flesh tone of the original one. So many years ago, I got a custom one made. And then we have Secret Warriors, which got a reprint, and Savage She Hulk. Oh, yeah, the She Hulk stuff. Spider Gwen's got two Omnis, and Surfer. We still only have two Omnis of Surfer. We need more love of the Silver Surfer. And then Spider Man 2099. That's one of the biggest Omnis right down there. Squirrel Girl. Man, I was so happy with these right here um, because we finally got all of Conan from Marvel collected in omnibus format. We didn't finish Savage Sword. But then Titan, I got to announce the, the Titan Omnis, the reprints and the detailed information about Volume 9 of Savage Sword and the Hopes of a King Volume 2. And I marvel, or the original years, Volume 11. But those things right now have been postponed until next year. So hopefully next year they'll start cranking them out. But that's who has the Robert E. Howard, well, at least the Conan stuff. Red Sonja's still over with Dynamite. Uh, but here's Cole and Solomon Kane, and I have those up there because I just wanted to keep them separated from the rest of the Marvel stuff, and then the rest of the Marvel stuff in alphabetical order. This is what I was talking about, the thing. I love this. Look, this is what they did. It's almost like a negative, just different pictures by Ron Wilson of the thing. Very freaking cool. I'm not even going to try to put the dust jacket on while we're walking because I know I'll end up bending it. It won't be good. And then Thor, we don't have a volume two reprint. So y'all make sure to vote for that if you want that back. Like we're getting an expanded Straczynski omnibus that will have the Karen Gill and stuff. And there it is, Thor by Jason Aaron. One of my, one of my fondest memories of announcing books was for over a year, there were few people in the comments, no matter what book I was announcing. When the hell is that Thor omnibus by Jason Aaron coming? Doesn't Marvel like money? Then I finally got to announce it. <laughs> Those same people that were asking were like, yeah, but that's not the right cover. <laughs> Some people, man. Uh, Thunderbolts. Hopefully we'll get that Dark Rain era. Oh, and I know we're getting Thunderbolts red. But my gosh, Thunderbolts, man. It's crazy that those are out now. Ultimate Spider-Man. That was one of my favorite reprints to announce because I know how much it meant to people. And now we've got three, four on the way. Reprint of this. All of Miles Morales just about, except for his new era. Uh, Ultimates, Ultimate X-Men. We're getting a volume two of Ultimate X-Men. It was delayed until 2024. Are you excited about the new Ultimates line? I am. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a fan of the original Ultimates. You probably don't believe that with all the Ultimate hardcovers and then the Omnis, right? But I make reading orders and stuff. And I've read it all. It's just, I don't know, it never clicked with me. But I tell you what, so many of my viewers just love it. Love it, so I think it's wonderful. Whatever brings you into comics. Venom, hopefully we'll have an Agent Venom Omnibus one day, including all the Cullen Bunn stuff. And then Donny Cates, War of the Realms, the What If, we're getting a volume two, sadly delayed until next year. And then Star Wars. Now one thing I never did get, even though, and I'll tell you this, I tried to get it and then I'm like, nah, I can't do it. I don't have the original Marvel years. In the original Marvel years, there was the UK one and then the Star Wars droids and Ewoks omnibus. So the Omnis are out of print now. I think volumes one and two are the most expensive ones. Somebody at a convention had all five of those Omnis. I just said Marvel UK and the Star Wars droids and Ewoks and the three Marvel year Omnis. And they wanted 150 for it. This is when they were being liquidated. So I knew they were going for like, online they were going for about 30 bucks. So I said, hey man, Will you take a hundred? And he said, I'll take $148. And I said, have a good day. I'm sure he sold them. And he probably, you know, came out ahead. But I think I was like, I'm not going to pay a hundred. Like, I try to read some of that stuff and it's not my favorite. So, uh, you know, maybe they'll be reprinted one day. But, oh my gosh, this was such a, one of my favorite reads when that book came out. I hadn't read that stuff. Uh, Empire was phenomenal. Two was okay. Rebellion was good. Um, New Republic is solid. This is probably my least favorite one is The Rise of the Sith. 
don't know. Just didn't like. I, I was expecting maybe more because everything else from that Dark Horse era was great. Uh, this is the Marvel era. You know, some good stuff in here. And Jason Aaron's run, Darth Vader's run by Kieran Gillen, and then later on it was the uh, Charles Soule stuff. Uh, I enjoyed this, The High Republic, because I like stories that take place before the Skywalker saga. Man, I never thought, like, this is crazy. We have aliens, four volumes of aliens in omnibus format, a Predator and a Predator 2 coming, and hopefully we'll get that AVP one day. Aliens versus Predator for people who don't know what that meant. Then Oz and Planet of the Apes, keeping those separate. So with so many books that I get and we get donated and of course publishers send my way, what do I do with the extra books that I don't keep or give away to family or friends or donate to libraries or little libraries, which we love to do? Well, every big milestone we have giveaways. Um, and we ship them overseas. We last, oh my gosh, the last lot I think I ended up it was like 50 books that I've got up there, or 50 boxes. Some of them international, some of them domestic. So, yeah, I save trade paperbacks, uh, sneak those in, omnis I end up sending to people. So it's been crazy, but I love paying it forward. So whatever I don't keep or give to friends or family or, or like I said, little libraries or libraries or trick-or-treaters, they love my house because... I give them comics, make sure, you know, nothing like Berserk or anything, even though Berserk's phenomenal. Uh, this is my stuff that I haven't uh, made haul videos for yet. So it's stuff that you're probably going to see in a haul video later on. I usually keep them in this shelf right here. And sometimes I've done overviews of them, but some of the stuff I ended up buying or that some of the stuff I, uh, some of my fine fans and viewers have sent my way. And I usually keep it over here. And then one of my favorite shelves is, of course, the horror shelf. I don't think any comic book library is complete without your easy, uh, the EC archives. I love that stuff. Uh, not just the horror stuff, but also the the, the war comics and the sci-fi stuff. I'm a big fan of the EC li uh, library. But Tales from the Crypt, Haunt of Fear, and Vault of Horror are my all-time favorites. Uh, and then you have the library editions of Hellboy and then... Booms Crimson made it up there. That's a fun series by Brian Augustine. Who, oh, man, I forgot. We lost him last year. He's a great writer. I mean, we, Mark Wade always thanks him for his whole career. If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't have been on The Flash. Uh, creepy Archives. This is some of the volumes that I'm missing, too. I, I'm missing volumes 20 through 28 of Creepy. And I think they go all the way to 34, 35. And same with Eerie. I'm missing... Lots of volumes. I'm missing uh, 14, 15, 16, and then 18 on. So always on the hunt for those. Uh, the Goon Library Editions, now that Dark Horse got them back, or Eric Powell's Goon back, hopefully we will see some of those Library Editions being reprinted. Harrow County, that was a good catch last year. Some of you all noticed that I was putting them out of order. So good on you all for spying that kind of stuff. Some stuff from Image Comics. Like I said, this is usually a, where I keep my horror stuff. So you have Aftershock, Image, IDW, uh, BPRD over here, along with my Tiki Alf that my buddy Jeff, who passed away a couple weeks ago, gave me. So now I gotta keep it and drink fruity drinks out of it, like Bahama Mamas, I guess, um, no matter what season it is. I always think of my buddy Jeff. Uh, but this is just an expansion of the Hellboy universe. But it's not all of it. Because there is some... Let's move this stuff out of the way. I don't even know what that is. It's probably something my daughter's dropped. I'll have to ask them about that. Um, but we have Spawn here. Uh, and then some more BPRD stuff. Or uh, Hellboy universe stuff. Like Abe Sapien. And there's Baltimore there. Lady Baltimore. Witchfinder. And down there's Nailbiter with Chew. And this is another discontinued series that I wish they had kept going. And that's Morning Glo Glories. Nick Spencer, who went on to write Spider-Man. Love that book. Uh, the Complete Walking Dead. And people have asked if I'm going to rebuy it when the color versions come out in hardcover. I don't know. Maybe I'll try out the first one. My One of my wife's favorite books, The Revival over here by Tim Seeley. And I got to interview him the other day, so... Uh, well, not the other day, it was a New York Comic Con, so I'll be putting that interview out sometime in December. My management down there, Moon Shadow, 
I gave an extra copy of this away recently in our 90K, some Vampirella Dynamite books right there, which are done in the same style as the EC archives. I suppose you could answer the Walking Dead question with how do you feel about the black and white versus color version of Werewolf by Night on Disney Plus? I haven't seen the color version, but I absolutely love the black and white. And I think maybe some of it has to do with what I saw first. Like, if you notice my Ninja Turtles, I don't own the works. The works is the color version of Ninja Turtles. I like it the way that I originally read it in black and white. I think the there are some exceptions, right? Like, I have the Parasite manga. I have the new color one. I have the bone, the complete bone in color library. So, maybe there are some exceptions. Uh, so, we have some top shelf stuff up here. One of my wonderful viewers in New York Comic Con last year got me a Nightwing pop. And I kept it behind me all this time. Uh, Prince Valiant is up there. Some of the Marvel portfolio books. They don't do that anymore. Uh, some manga box sets like Nausicaa Valley of the Wind by Miyazaki. And, of course, Battle Angel Alita. Oh, my gosh. That stuff is so good. Uh, some artist editions up here. And then the gallery and treasury editions. Tin Tin. One of my favorite... Uh, reads I had a few years back because my viewers were telling me why I haven't read Tintin. It was just something I didn't grow up with. Uh, the only reason I knew Tintin was because of the HBO cartoon. Uh, then Little Nemo, the Frank Frazetta book that Sarah Frazetta sent my way completely by surprise. The X-Men box set. My buddy uh, Spider-Ben got this for me. Not much of a Power Rangers fan, but I know how much this means to him. Uh, Jade... Um, Jason David Frank passed away, and that one's signed by him. And then this is the Marvel stamps that my viewers from the UK gave me. Not just Marvel, I'm sorry, but Transformer stamps. And then the X-Men and Marvel stamps. Man, my overseas viewers, you guys are so awesome. This stuff, like, yeah, we don't get... And what the heck? Why is that light? You should have told me about the light. Uh, that light is for my backlight whenever I'm doing overviews of books. i got to make sure that the books are lit up well enough to see everything. Uh, and then, of course, the top tier of all top tier or top shelves, whatever, X-Men. In chronological reading order um, and all the way through the events like Inferno and Extinction Agenda. Uh, mapping these in there in between X-Men by Claremont 1 and 2. Bishop's Crossing, Executioner's Song. Oh my gosh. So many memories, even bad memories of books that I read in my youth. And then when I stopped reading and when I came back, I found out there were more events. And I'm like, well, now I got to find out what the 12th is about. Oh my gosh. I remember like coming back to comics and being so excited that they revealed who the 12 were. The 12 to me were my childhood and my friends like getting together trying to figure out who the 12 mutants to take us into the future were going to be. Let me tell you something, it's not the way that I thought it was going to be. But that's what happens with hype and anticipation. Uh, New X-Men and Wheaton's Astonishing, the two titles that really brought me back to comics. House of M, we are getting a companion to that, so I have to ship some things around. Uh, people ask me why I have this giant size X-Men book. Because it is the only place, believe it or not, not for Deadly Genesis, but it is the only place that has the X-Men, Giant Size X-Men 3 and 4. Now people are, uh, you know, people are familiar with Giant Size X-Men number 1, of course. But Giant Size X-Men 3 and 4 were supposed to be drawn by um, Dave Cockrum. However, Dave Cockrum got sick. So this is the extra stuff, like, from uh, the... X-Men Classics. So Neil Adams came in and did Giant Size X-Men. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't Chris Claremont, but it was Joss Whedon that wrote these stories, taking place during these particular times of uh, the X-Men. And we, they also snuck in here, like X-Men Origins Colossus. And yeah, this is where they put a lot of the origin stories. So this is a deluxe edition just called giant size x-men but also has deadly genesis which you can find in oversized hardcover our <sighs> deadly genesis is also in the war of the kings or prelude to the war of the kings and then adjectiveless x-men as i like to call it the mike carey era going into the colin yost era 
Uh, this is the biggest omnibus. Somebody asked me recently, what is the biggest omnibus? And that is Avengers vs. X-Men. It has over 1,660 pages. But it's both a companion and Avengers vs. X-Men oversized hardcovers put together. And still did not contain this, the Avengers X Sanction. But more of the... Man, what am I... It never surprises me. Like, I'm never surprised by who watches my show. Uh, this was a gentleman that worked on Spider-Man, the... Uh, in, uh, across the Spider-Verse movie. He was uh, the head animator and still working for that company. And he sent me a nice care package, which I will always treasure, like a backpack. Oh, that just never ceases to amaze who watches my show. I'm, I'm honestly surprised. Like, like how many creators and like um, people that write these books that I love or people that draw them like watch my show. Like it's amazing. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Vortex. This is why I love making reading orders because not very many people know this stuff. But like Guardians of the Galaxy, this is the crossover with the X-Men, also has Star-Lord. But that's not collected in full in the Guardians of the Galaxy by Brian Michael Bendis, so it's out in deluxe edition. And it is the crossover during this all-new X-Men time. Then, of course, the Krakoa era. It's the one that sticks out like a sore thumb because I got the direct market cover for some reason. And that's okay. And then, of course, Odds and Ends, the New Mutants, which I need to make room for number three because I got a copy over there, which we'll look at in a little bit on the table um and wolverine you asked me what one of my favorite designs for wolverine was or uh for underneath the dust check is i gotta go with i think this one here excuse me there wolverine but this one here has panels yeah i love when they do that like panels from the comic and this is my favorite wolverine omnibus too just solid so that's a nice design i really like that we're getting a volume five that's one of my favorite stories to tell about volume one how it was when uh, i think when david and i started talking more david gabriel and i about how some of these books are out of print and have been out of print that book had been out of print for 10 years and it makes sense right like it didn't sell well when it originally came out but we were living in different times and i said you know 10 years had passed and we, <laughs> we made a little bit of a friendly bet if it sold we get a volume two if the reprint sold. And as you can see, we have four volumes now. Fifth on the way. Love that story. And then other Wolverine Omnis. I'm surprised we don't have a Greg Rucka Omni yet. You know, including the Yoshitaka Mano story with Electra. I think it would be a skinny omnibus, but I mean, no more skinnier than that one right there by Mike Miller. Then the Jason Aaron stuff with. It's funny because this was released. This was the first one released, then that one, then that one. So it was like three, two, one, or sorry, three, one, two. It's the way these were released. X Factor here, we're getting a volume two, hopefully a volume three to wrap up that era. And I'm hoping when they reprint X Force, they'll do one, two, and three instead of Deadpool and X Force, Cable and X Force. And then Cable and Oversized Hardcover. So I do mix in my Oversized Hardcovers with the Deluxe Editions. So behind me, yeah, are some of my favorite books that I own, and for different reasons. Um, Street Fighter, I'm a big fan of the fighting game. I, I have no idea how many quarters I spent at the arcade when the original Street Fighter 2 came out. Street Fighter 1, I saw and I just didn't care for. But when Street Fighter 2, you, I don't know if I could even explain what that phenomenon was like. People putting quarters on the machine to go next. Like, lines wrapped around Pizza Hut or whoever had the arcade. And the stuff by Udon is just phenomenal. Uh, down here I have The Boys. And that was very special to me because it's something that we helped get made on the channel. Not me, but you all that watch my channel. We voted on how they should be reprinted and Dynamite listened. Uh, over here to the right is the Cyber Force Top Cow. That's when Top Cow reached out to me. And I kept both copies because... Mark Silvestri is my favorite artist, and for him and his company to reach out to me, a guy making YouTube videos in my basement, that just meant the world to me. So I keep that as a symbol. And then they've got custom cop copies of Nightwing, who's but they're getting or they're coming out in compendium. Um, the Transformers. Oh, this will be in the third reading order or part three of Transformers reading order, and Phase One. Phase 2, and the unfinished Phase 3 that broke my heart. Oh, man. 
And down there we've got Hellboy. Or, oh, no, never mind. I had 1963 holding that up. That's where it is. Whoops. And Phoenix and X-Men. Um, uh, the Adventures down there, the animated series. And Batman, the animated series down there. Uh, so one of the things that I do when I, I'm in front of the camera, so when I'm talking to the, you all, is I put like upcoming comics up here. Like this is Devil's Reign. I think that's due out in January sometime. I think so. Yeah, January. So people get to look at it and they're like, oh, it's actually going to come out. I know you all love that because when I put a book up there, they're like, oh, finally, it's coming out. And uh, people have commented like, I don't believe a book is coming out unless I see it on the back of Omar's shelves. Uh, so let's go over here. Let's uh, start from the top and then work our ways down. Like we saw the Children of the Atom box set. These are some of my favorite box sets. I can't believe I haven't made that video yet of my favorite manga box sets. But that's Legend of Zelda and that's Akira. Oh my gosh. So Mark, Mike, Mike sent me this, I think. One of my viewers, the Don Rosa Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck, the artist edition. Oh my gosh, that thing's a masterpiece. My buddy Simone, one of the few blueberries. I just come out here to America. Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. This was sent to me by one of my viewers. Uh, the Jubilee Collection, the Apex Editions from 2000 AD, uh, Calvin and Hobbes and the Complete Far Side, Scurry. Max Smith actually reached out to me because when I had the video, what was it? He sent me extra copies of his book for our giveaway because he was like, thank you for bringing attention to my book. Um, that meant a lot to me that my channel was reaching out to people and checking out independent people's work. So that was really cool. Check out this. It's a little oldest Viking. Oh, this is so cute. So he does little Kickstarters for each issue, each one of them coming out in a hardcover. Just beautiful, kid-friendly, all ages type of stories that, you know, part of the reason why I love comics is there's different types of stories. Oh, love this set right here. The Don Rosa Library. This is the latest printing of the sky. Yoshi Takamon, I'm a big fan of art books. One day maybe I'll give you a look at my art books. And then Sin City, artist edition of uh, the Marvel stories of Michael Golden, Frank Miller's Daredevil, Trunks is just hanging there. Uh, there's the Batman cover art that my buddy Super Laugh Heart sent my way. These are the big monster sized books from Marvel Comics, the biggest books. Maybe not as big as Little Nemo. I don't know if you can peek back there, but there's a Little Nemo all the way back there. That's probably the biggest book I own. That's from Tashin. And then I promised that I had more DC stuff, but this is where I keep it behind me. These are my favorites. This is the Absolute Editions of Day Tripper, Preacher, Swamp Thing, and Sandman still with the Vertigo logo, because I think now they're being reprinted with a DC Black Label logo. Uh, the Fourth World, like I said, I had that. Uh, Why the Last Man. And this is where I'm keeping some of the books that I, like, the Omnis I usually keep to the side that I have to read. Like, this is the Iron Fist book I was talking about. It comes out in January. And I usually have the books over here that I'm reading next. I, I take them out of the plastic, and I'm like, oh, I got to read Sigil next. And then Sp Spider-Man by Sadarsky I already started reading, and Hawkeye I've read, but that's one thing that uh, you ask me. Like, do I reread everything? So if I've read Hawkeye twice already, and I got to do an overview of this... I'll skim through some pages and be like, oh, that's right. This happens here. This happens here. Got it. Old brain starts working overtime and uh, going back to that time that I read those issues. So here we have the latest printing of Batman Nightfall Volume 1. And people have asked me on my channel, do I keep my original ones or do I get the new printings? And I'll be honest. If the new printing is slimmer, I usually go for the new printing because it gives me more room. So when the second printing of Nightfall 2 comes out, if it's slimmer like this one, I'll probably keep the new one just to make more room on my shelf. And you have No Man's Land, Grant Morrison, uh, Paul Dini. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put Hush, maybe before Paul Dini. Because <sighs> it's before and after and during. And then some of the New 52 era, the Rebirth era, Batgirl, Batwoman. Some of my favorite titles over here by Fantagraphics and Image. And then uh, Mage. Oh, man. I was waiting for Mage for years and it finally came back. Some custom books. I don't know how we don't have an official oversized hardcover or of Graham's Prophet. That thing is freaking awesome. Colossal Conan over here. 
all three of them. The Sumerian and King Conan. Gal Simone. I wish Dynamite would do more of these. Big Damn Sim City. And of course, Monster Size Hellboy down there. My pride and joy that I still love to this day. I'll never get rid of, even if they give us official Omnis. But these were the prototype Omnis of Starman. Standard size hardcovers and Alan Moore Swamp Thing. And I kept these because these are the original colors. Or as close to the original colors than the Absolute Editions which have the new colors. Usagi Ojimbo. The box set they promised they would never, ever reprint. But hey, here we are now. And then, of course, the Saga. The These are limited edition hardcovers. Hope they reprint these in non-limited edition. Because there's a lot of want for it. There's a lot of love for it. Star Child. Uh, this was a Kickstarter I did. This is James Owen's Star Child. And I took it, oh my gosh, it's been a couple of years since I took it with me uh, to one of our trips and I started reading it and I was really digging it. And then when you do this, or me, when I do this, you know, I do this every day, I do this for a living, I get sidetracked. So this was like something personal I wanted to read. But because I have other books to read I had to put that to the side two years goes by and I forgot that I still have my bookmark though um, but that's what happens and I'm not complaining I think it's a blessing and wonderful what I do for a living but yeah like the pleasure part of reading sometimes has to be put to the side because you got to get to reading all these books that are coming out and I want to do justice to my overviews by being familiar with the stuff so I can talk to you all about it Power Rangers these are the hardcovers from Boom Studios and the new one down here, because this is the new era. And then, of course, well, it's working a little backwards, but this is my Rick Remender library with Fear Agent coming back to print. That, to me, is his magnum opus, so get it. Please do yourself a favor and read it. And then Black Science is the one that kicks it off. And then down here is Upgrade Soul, and we only find them when... Their Dead, which was the Al Ewing book I was telling you about that is great. Now, a little behind the scenes. And we have come to the end of the tour. Uh, but before I go, I did want to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes here. Where I film. Uh, not from this side, but from this side where you see the overhead shot of books. Uh, what I usually do is, not only do I have books over there... Uh, to read, but I keep them in in the order that I'm going to be reading them in. And if it's something I've read in the past, like these two, I've read a lot in the past. I don't know why I've read a lot of the Clone Saga, but I keep them up at the very top so I can kind of skim through them and actually read some of those issues of Wonder Man that I haven't read before. And then I have another stack over here that this is the projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, that I'm current, like I am literally filming. In between this, like the video for the upcoming trade paperbacks coming out from Marvel this week, reading, rereading some of that Mark Wade Daredevil. So yeah, that kind of give you an idea of what happens behind the scenes. Now, if you're interested in purchasing any of the books I talked about, or most of them, check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my walkthrough tour of my library for 2023. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. We do put out videos every day. Uh, thank you all for watching the videos and asking so many questions and just interacting. This has been a blessing to be doing this every year. And thank you all for that keep reminding me to do these tours every year. I love that you all love watching these and keep an eye out, that's why I said, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell for notifications or the manga tour that is coming out soon. So that's it everyone. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.